guys, it's Kim Sue I'm Kirsten and welcome back to another true crime video. So today we're going to be talking about a little boy named Timothy. Um, so let's just jump right into his case. Timothy Mark O'Brien was born on April 5th of 1966. He was 8 years old at the time of his death. He was from Deer Park, Texas. His parents were Diane and Ronald Clark. He did have a younger sister named Elizabeth who was five years old at the time. Um, so let's talk about the incident that occurred. On October 31st of 1974, Ronald and his two children and a neighbor of theirs, Jim Bates, and his son went out to go trick-or-treating. They went to a house that the lights were off and nobody was answering the door so the kids became impatient as they wanted to go get some more candy that they ran off to the next house and Jim followed. But Ronald stayed behind and then Ronald eventually caught up to the group a couple minutes later and he actually had five 21 inch pixie sticks. At the end of the night after they were done trick-or-treating he gave each of the children um, each one of his children a pixie stick, the neighbor boy a pixie stick. He also gave them an extra one because they did have another child that wasn't with them. And then he gave out the last one to a 10 year old boy that he recognized from church. Before bed, Timothy asked if he could have a piece of candy, which I feel like as a child we all did this. Timothy was given the pixie stick. And he had some trouble getting the powder out of it, so he asked Ronald to help him, and he did. And as he was eating it, he kind of complained that it tasted very bitter. So Ronald gave him a glass of Kool-Aid to kind of wash it down. And immediately after this, Timothy complained that his stomach hurt, and then he ran to the bathroom and vomited and started to convulse. Ronald kind of held Timothy as he was vomiting and then he said that he went limp and then they called 911 and on the way to the hospital Timothy actually passed away less than an hour after eating this pixie stick candy. Let's talk about the investigation as it is quite long. So Timothy's death kind of sparked the community as being very scared. Um, especially when it came to their children's Halloween candy that a lot of the parents ended up turning the candy into the police. This case is the reason why it's very important to check your children's Halloween candy to make sure it hasn't been messed with or tampered with and this case kind of sparked that whole fear. Uh, medical examiners while examining Timothy smelled almonds in his mouth and they kind of had an idea that if he ate a pixie stick it shouldn't be all the knee smell unless it had been poisoned and they actually had a hunch that it would have been confirmed by the autopsy of potassium cyanide so potassium cyanide is ultimately colorless salt that is very similar to sugar it is used in jewelry for like buffing and uh, it's also used in gold mining. That it's also been described to taste very bitter, but it also has a burning sensation. Four out of the five pixie sticks were recovered by the police, but the fifth one, the parents of the child, was very, very scared that the child had already eaten it because they could not find it until they went to their child to make sure, and he was actually asleep with the unopened candy in his hand. He unfortunately could not get the staple that was on it undone so to eat it so that's kind of ultimately what kind of saved this kid's life was that he just couldn't get the candy open and he ended up passing out from being tired that night anyways. So all five of the pixie sticks were opened filled with the cyanide poisoning and then closed up and stapled shut. Um, the candy was tested and they found that the dose that Timothy ate was enough to kill two adults and the other candies that were not ate had enough to kill three to four adults. That is an insane amount. He had the lowest amount and he 
was dead within one hour. So that's crazy to know that the other ones, if they actually did eat the candy, that it would have been probably minutes. Ronald had ended up telling the police that he didn't remember which house it was that didn't answer the door for them of where he got the candy from. Um, police started to kind of suspect um, something was a little bit off, but it was also revealed to them that they had only been to about a two block radius of trick or treating because it was raining that night and so they didn't want to be out for very long. Suspicions kind of increased by this because they found out that none of the houses was giving out pixie sticks that day. They had Ronald kind of walk the blocks three separate occasions to kind of spark a memory of which house it was. And on the third try, he finally admitted to which house uh, was the one that gave him the pixie sticks. Um, he claimed that they didn't turn on the light, that they opened the door with a crack, they gave him the pixie sticks, and he only saw a hairy arm, and that was it. They did discover that the house was owned by a man named Courtney Melvin. Melvin was an air traffic controller and that he had not gotten home until about 11 o'clock that night. He did state that his wife and his daughter were home giving out candy, but they shot off the lights early due to the fact that they ran out of candy, so they never answered the door. Uh, police ruled out him after arresting him at work and his co-workers as well as his family all stated that he was at work at the time that this all occurred and his timesheets also proved that he was at work at the time that this happened. During this time, Timothy's funeral happened and Ronald was very on edge. He was telling people what he was going to do with the money and he also was getting mad at his family that didn't want to stay up late that night due to the fact that he had a song that was being broadcasted on the television. Police did learn that Ronald had about $100,000 in debt, which is equivalent to today's money of $620,000. He also struggled to keep a job. He had 21 jobs in 10 years, and he was suspected of stealing from his job, and he was about to be fired. He also had a car that was going to be repossessed. He defaulted on several bank loans and his family home was actually going to be closed on. Police found out that he had a life insurance policy on both of his children that he had taken up out months before Timothy's death. Um, in January of 1974, he took out a $10,000 life insurance policy on both of his children that would be equivalent to about $61,781 per child of today's money. One month before the incident happened he took an additional $20,000 out on each child that is equivalent to about $123,600 of today's money and then just days before the incident happened, he took out an additional 20000 on each of the children. So about $60,000 was taken out on each child, and that is equivalent to about so $370,700. His wife claimed that she had no idea about the life insurance policies. Um, and actually the day after Timothy's death, Ronald was calling the insurance companies asking when he would get the payout for his son's death. Um, police had learned that he had visited a chemical supply store, but he ended up leaving the store not purchasing anything because they only had five pounds uh, of cyanide to purchase and he, need, he wanted more than that. Police suspected that Ronald had laced the candy uh, to kill his children to collect the life insurance on them to help get him out of debt. They also believe that he gave the other children the candy just to kind of cover up his crimes. 
um, police repeatedly question Ronald, and during this whole entire time, he claims his innocence. Um, they ended up doing a search in his house where they found some scissors with some white residue on them, very similar to cyanide. On November 5th of 1974, Ronald Clark was arrested. Let's talk about the trial. He was charged with one count of capital murder and four counts of attempted murder. He entered a plea of not guilty on all the counts. His trial began on May 5th of 1975. A chemist testified that in summer of 1973, he was asking about cyanide and how much of it would be fatal. His friends and co-workers testified in the months before this became unusually interested in cyanide and how much of it would kill a person. Family also testified that on Timothy's funeral, he was talking about taking the money and using it to take a long vacation. His wife said that Ronald uh, forced Timothy to eat the pixie stick and that pixie and that Timothy didn't pick it out. The trial started to gain very much national news and they started to call him the candy man. June 3rd of 1975 a jury took 46 minutes to find Ronald guilty of capital murder and four counts of attempted murder. The jury then took another 71 minutes to sentence him by the electric chair. So I'm going to talk about the aftermath a little bit. Um, Shortly after the trial, Ronald's wife um, did file for divorce. A little bit later, she did get remarried and her new husband did adopt um, Elizabeth. So Ronald's first execution date was set for August 8th of 1980, but his lawyer ended up petitioning for a stay of execution, which was granted. So his second date was set for May 25th of 1982, and that was also postponed. Um, I have no idea the reason means why. So a third date was set for October 31st of 1982, um, but the Supreme Court delayed that one due to letting him have an appeal for a new trial. So the fourth date was set for March 31st of 1984. He was executed by lethal injection instead of an electric chair due to the fact that the Supreme Court had ruled the electric chair as cruel and unusual punishment that they, I believe, banned the electric chair. Um, so they started to do lethal injections instead. Um, during this time, there was about 300 people outside chanting uh, trick or treat and throwing candy at anti-death protesters. I'm going to leave you here with some photos of Timothy and his life. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below what case I should do next, and subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on that bell notification so you're notified when we post every single Tuesday and occasionally on Fridays when I feel like it. This is KMC Whatever. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. And they actually do believe it was cyanide. And so on October, nope, on October, nope, on November 5th, of 2000, nope. <laughs> uh